how to not, <coughs> how to not get sick coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm Justin Hebert, this is Dr. Hugh Beatty, this is another episode of Limitless Longevity and it is filmed and released Dr. Beatty in the heart of cold and flu season. We are, we are in the midst of the holiday season, it's getting colder, it's rainy outside, we're spending more time inside. We have heard story after story in the news of these bugs going around and people getting sick. Walk us through kind of very briefly what's out there, what the risks are, and what we can do to protect ourselves this cold and flu season. Well, what's out there right now has always been out there, is viruses. Mm. Yep. Viruses are everywhere. And I have patients who call me and say, hey, doc, you know, I'm, I came down with a cold, and do I need anything, and stuff like that. And then I begin to ask some questions. When you get sick, some people are prone to super infections. Mm. They can get a bacterial infection. It's manifested as sinus congestion and sinus infection and green drainage and yellow mucus. And, and then they can get bronchitis and cough up yellow or green. So they need their antibiotic. So sometimes they're confused, say, well, should I take an antibiotic for a viral infection? I say it depends on what's going on with those symptoms. Hmm, absolutely. And this is a, a, a timely video, I hope, for a lot of our viewers. <laughs> it's ill timing for me. I had this a few weeks ago yes. as someone who does not regularly get sick. I had a 102 fever for four days. Mm. And it, I, like, I was laid up and I looked miserable. My wife is like, I've... She's like, I've known him for 16 years. He has yeah. never been this sick, right? So it's going out there. What can I have done on the front end to maybe, I mean, outside of kids at school, what but, could I have done to not get sick? Well, the first thing that 102 fever in a male, or especially an adult, is pretty significant because it's, sometimes it's hard to mount a temperature over 100 degrees. So you definitely, I would have been thinking about dehydration there. Mm. So, and I, my question, my immediate thoughts were, are you drinking enough water? Were you eating enough? Did you try to get your no. temperature down? <laughs> yes. Stuff like that. Did you have a super infection going on? <clears throat> but that's just me. Um, but yeah, the things that you could have, not really you couldn't have done anything differently. The virus is everywhere. In mm. fact, I was listening to a podcast the other day. You told me every year we're trying to figure out what flu vaccine to give. Because we're kind of focusing on four different strains of the flu virus, but there's actually 240 different flu uh, virus strains. Wow. Yep. And we all know about coronavirus. Yep. And then we also know about the rival virus. So there's viruses everywhere. And this is just that time of season. Yep. Viruses love to thrive in this time of cold weather. Also, in addition to that, we're, we're very social right now. This is the holiday season. We're visiting people. We're sharing meals. And then when people come together, the viruses are being spread. It's just something that just happens. Yeah. So maybe we should call this, this video then like <laughs> share meals, not germs, right? Yes. That's yeah. <laughs> but in, in relation to the, let's take this into your practice. And in the relation to the five pillars, how do yeah. you see those helping people stay healthy in times like this? Well, you got to get exposed to the virus. I remember when the coronavirus uh, pandemic was just beginning and it's uh, early on. And I wrote a long article on Facebook and I was saying it's inevitable that you're going to get exposed. But how does your body deal with it? Mm. And so the whole five pillars is, is about strengthening that immune system and about making a healthy mitochondria. The mitochondria is the workhorse for the body. And the mitochondria provides that energy to keep that immune system strong. And so everything I do is about health. And actually, you, when you have a healthy immune system, you, you age slower. You're less uh, prone to any type of illness, including infections. But if you do get an infection, you have the energy to deal with it. So whether it's hormone balance, gut health, nutrition, sleep, uh, just staying fit, drinking more water. You know, just the fact that when you get exposed to the virus and you just rinse that virus down your throat, okay, it's better to keep it right there lodging in your, in your throat. In yeah. addition to that, just trying to avoid toxic situations where your immune system is not mm. depressed. Yeah. But one of the things I do, I'm going to say this real quick, Justin, is that when I'm out in public and last night I went to a, a dinner uh, and... And I was, I love to wash my hands before I eat, especially if you're going to have chips and little finger food. And uh, this person came late and, hey, Dr. Baby, and reached for my hand, my right hand. <laughs> so I just had to go to the bathroom. And so what I did, until I got up, wash my hands again, I used my left hand. Yeah. So I don't let people touch my left hand. <laughs> 
<laughs> when I'm in public and I go to social events. Yeah. And so what happens, people shake with their right hands and they put their right hand back to the face. They're touching their nose. They're touching their mouth. They're yeah. eating with it. Yeah. And so what I've done over the years is always use my left hand when I'm in public. So not everybody knows my secret. They'll start grabbing my left yeah, hand. They're going to say, okay. hey, how you doing, Doug? <laughs> Watch uh, him sweat. He's going to yeah. get red. He's like, I, I can't eat yeah. now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I think that's a... It's a great and practical health tip, right? right. And it's, it's one of those things. I've read a study years ago, and it, you know, it was along the lines of how often do people touch their faces? Because everybody will say, I don't touch my face a whole lot. Oh, yeah. And then they started to do video studies where they would actually monitor, and all of a sudden somebody's touching their eye, or they're mm-hmm. scratching their chin. Mm-hmm. And you know, the average person is, person is touching their face like two dozen times an hour or something. And we just we don't think about it because it's so ingrained in who we are, right? And that awareness that as soon as I put my hands near my face, I'm putting whatever germs are there into those places that can get me sick. So part of it you're saying is just an awareness of where these things like to live, how they like to breed and spread, and doing what we can within our power to keep that stuff at bay. Yeah, and people come in, they say, hey, Doc, should I wear my mask because I'm sick, things like that? Or I get, in public, people are concerned about the mask. And personally, the virus can get through those little masks. Yeah. Okay. And so you're not going to avoid getting exposed to the to viruses. But that's why it's important to have a healthy immune system. One of the things that I do, especially during this time, make sure you're taking your vitamin D and your vitamin C and your zinc. Those are critical. And then when your body is under attack from a viral infection and your immune system is depressed, you need to build it up. Take that B complex. Take your B. 12, because your body is under attack and is using up a lot of energy to fight off the infection and you need the B-complex to help with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what, what we're hearing Dr. Beatty say is those germs are out there, the viruses are out there, that the chance of you catching something or being exposed to it is extremely high. Yes. You can't fix that. What you can fix is the way your body responds and you can hedge your bets by reducing inflammation and getting sleep and being in a healthy weight and getting exercise and having good gut health and drinking plenty of water and the things that you hear Dr. Beatty speak on day in and day out, those are your keys not just to that healthy life in general but specifically at this time with these viruses going around. That if you want to be healthy, make sure you start with that firm foundation in place because that gives you the best chance. Yes, and I want to add this. There is a time to finally see the physician. And I know right now, a lot of times my patients call and we're doing telemedicine visits for them so they don't have to necessarily come in. But one of the things I do a lot on with patients is hydrate them. Hmm. Your body gets gets very dehydrated. I had a young man, uh, 17 years old, He got sick with a virus, and his mom called and said, hey, he's not eating, he's not drinking very much, not urinating very much. And she said, what can I do? I said, bring him in. And so we brought him in, and I gave him three liters of fluid. He's a 17-year-old guy, like 6'2", probably weighs 170, big guy. And so after three liters of fluid, that's how dehydrated he was. He still did not have to urinate. And so I was about to give him a fourth, and his mom said, okay, he's feeling a little bit better. I'll make sure he hydrates when he gets home. He did finally void when he got home. The next day she called me. I got to throw in the pluck for ozone. Yeah. The next day she called me and said, he's about 80% better. I really want to try that ozone infusion. So we did. And when he left, he said, Doc, I feel great. I have energy. I feel back to myself. Because that ozone is working on the mitochondria level. It is increasing the energy that comes out of the mitochondria. Mm. And so because you're giving more oxygen to make more ATP. And that's why it felt better so quickly. So, Absolutely. So there are things that you can do pre-getting sick. There are things you need to be doing if you happen to get sick. And there are those things that you can do then to help you recover. And if you're in the Bakersfield area, Dr. Beatty would love to help you. So be sure to check out his con- contact information below. We post it in every video. But start to take your health journey seriously. As you go to these holiday parties and you're exposed to new people or new situations, you will get exposed to viruses. But you can do your part to protect yourself and stay healthy. We want to wish you a prosperous and happy holiday season, a a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for subscribing and we will see you on a future video. Hi, I'm Dr. Hugh Baby, uh, TWD, the wellness doc. And I want to give you some information during this time of the cold and uh, flu season. Um, There's viruses everywhere and we can't avoid them. But there's some helpful things that you can do to try to protect yourself during this time. One of the things is try to avoid exposure to people who are sick. But if you do get exposed to them, I protect my left hand. 
Don't put any other hand in your face but your left hand. And don't let anyone else touch that left hand. That can go a long way to keep from spreading that virus to your own self. The other thing you can do is make sure you, on a routine basis you continue to take your vitamins, your vitamin D, your vitamin C, your zinc. Hydrate well. I always tell patients to drink at least half their body weight in ounces of water daily. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces of water, about three liters of water a day. That hydration helps you too, helps your immune system. So during this time of the cold flu season and we're out there celebrating all these holidays, just remember these helpful tips. It can keep you safe and keep you healthy. This is Dr. Hugh Bailey, The Wellness Doc.